pirate talking to you about geometric probability. I love math, especially when you're solving for R. First thing we do is review probability. Remember, that's the extent to which an event is likely to occur. And it's measured by the ratio of the favorable outcomes, so the outcomes that you want to happen, to the whole number of outcomes possible. Now, when you create this ratio, you will get a number written as a fraction or a decimal that is between 0 and 1, with 0 meaning the event will not occur, and 1 meaning the event will definitely occur. So again, we have two examples down here just to show you what probability looks like. We have the first one, which says, what is the probability that you flip a coin and it lands on heads? Well, remember, probability is the ratio of the favorable outcomes to the number of outcomes possible. Now, how many outcomes are possible when you flip a coin? Well, there are only two outcomes possible. You get heads or you get tails. So in our denominator, we're going to put two. In our numerator, how many favorable outcomes are there? Again, you're flipping a coin and you either get heads or tails. This time, we want it to land on heads. So there's one favorable outcome that it lands on heads. That's why the probability probability of flipping a coin and it landing on heads would be one over two or one half. The second part says, what is the probability that you draw an ace of spades from a complete deck of cards? Well, again, probability is the ratio of the favorable outcomes to the whole number of outcomes possible. So if you're drawing a card from a complete deck, how many outcomes are possible? Well, there are 52 total cards in a complete deck. So there are 52 possible outcomes when you draw a card from a complete deck. Now, how many favorable outcomes are there? Well, we're trying to figure out what is the probability that you draw an ace of spades. There's only one ace of spades in the deck, meaning there's one favorable outcome to the 52 total possible outcomes, meaning the probability that you draw an ace of spades from a complete deck of cards would be one out of 52 or one over 52. Now, to date, we're also going to be dealing with probability as a percent. So the way you determine percent probability is you write your probability in fraction form as a decimal. So take one, divide it by two, and you'll get the decimal for that. Take one, divide it by 52. 52 and you'll get the decimal for that. Then take whatever that decimal form is and multiply it by 100. That will then give you the percent probability. Now with percent probability, if an event is definitely not going to occur, it's going to have a 0% probability. If the event will definitely occur, it's going to have a 100% probability. Now let's talk about the length probability ratio. This says if a line segment, segment AD, contains another segment, segment BC, and a point of segment AD is chosen at random, then the probability the point is on segment BC is the length of segment BC divided by the length of segment AD. So today, we're going to be dealing with geometric probabilities, and one such geometric probability would be the length probability ratio, which just says if you have some big line segment, in this case, it's line segment AD, and on that bigger line segment, there's a smaller line segment, segment BC in this case, and I'm going to choose some point on segment AD. What is the probability that if I were to choose some point on segment AD, that it would also be on segment BC? Well, all you have to do to determine that probability would be to take the length or measure of segment BC and put it over the length of the entire segment, segment AD. So the measure of segment BC would be 2 centimeters. That goes in our numerator. The measure of the entire segment, segment AD, would be 3 centimeters plus 2 centimeters plus 5 centimeters, which is 10 centimeters. So 2 over 10 simplifies to 1 over 5, meaning the probability that you choose some point on segment AD, and it also lies on segment BC, would be 1 out of 5 or 0.2 if we were to write this as a decimal. Or if we wanted to write it as a percent, we would take 0.2 and multiply it by 100, and we would get a 20% probability. The second type of geometric probability we're going to talk about today is the area probability ratio. This says if a region A contains a region B and a point E in region A is chosen at random, then the probability that point E is on region B is the area of region B divided by the area of region A. Now, this is very similar to what we were just doing with the length probability ratio. Just instead of working in one dimension, we're working in two dimensions. Instead of using the length of line segments, we're using the area of geometric figures. So what the area probability ratio is saying is that if you have some large region, we're calling that region A, and within that larger region, there is a smaller region, we're calling that region B, and you decide to choose some point at random in region A, our larger region, what is the probability that if you were to choose some point in that larger region A, that it would also lie in region B? 
the way you determine this is by finding the area of region B and putting it over the area of region A. In this case, because region B is a circle, to find the area of this, you use the formula pi r squared, where r is our radius, that would be 2 inches. So pi times 2 squared is going to give you the area of region B. The area of region A, we see this is a square, so the area of that would just be the length of one of the sides squared. So we end up getting that the probability that you choose some point at random in region A, and it's also in region B, would be 4 pi over 25. Or, if you were to divide that in your calculator and write your probability as a decimal, 0.503. Or if you wanted to write that probability as a percent, you just take 0 0.503 and multiply it by 100. You get 50.3%. You kids want to know how I bought my ship so cheaply? I bought it on sale! <laughs> Example time. Now example one says point X is chosen at random on segment JM. Find the probability that X is on segment KL. So in this example, we are given a larger line segment, segment JM, and on that larger line segment, we're given a smaller line segment, segment KL. And we're choosing some point at random on segment JM. We're gonna call that point, point X. Now we wanna determine if we choose some point at random on segment JM, that that point also lies on segment KL. What is the probability of that? Well, to determine that probability, we use the length probability ratio, which says to determine the probability that some point chosen at random on segment segment JM is also on segment KL, you just have to take the measure or length of segment KL and put it over the measure or length of segment JM. So the measure of segment KL or length of segment KL is 7 inches. That's going to go in our numerator. The measure or length of segment JM is going to be 3 plus 7 plus 4. So that's going to be 14 inches. That's going to go in our denominator. We then simplify this and we end up getting 1 half. So the probability that if you choose some point at random on segment JM, that that point will also lie on segment KL in here would be one half or 0.5 or 50%. Why couldn't the pirate play cards? Cause he was standing on the deck. Grr, you try. Okay, this says if a train departs from a station every 15 minutes, what is the probability you have to wait five minutes or more for that train? So again, in this question, we're trying to determine the probability that you wait five or more minutes. Now, this may not look like it, but it's actually a length probability ratio question. We can actually draw a representation of your wait time using a line segment. So the shortest amount of wait time you will wait for a train is zero minutes, right? If you arrive there and the train's already there, then you don't have to wait at all. Conversely, if you arrived right as the train was leaving, the longest amount of time you would wait for the next train would have to be 15 minutes. Now, in this question, it says, what is the probability that you have to wait five minutes or more. So to help you visualize this problem, what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of line segments on our wait time interval right here. So from a zero minute wait time to a five minute wait time, we're going to call that segment AB. That's going to represent the amount of time that you have to wait that we're not concerned about. Because in this question, we're trying to figure out what is the probability that you have to wait five minutes or more. So that would be from five minutes to 15 minutes. So we'll call that segment BC. So on this whole time interval, we're trying to figure out what is the probability you have to wait five minutes or more. So to determine this probability, probability, we're going to use the length probability ratio, where we take the measure or length of segment BC, which represents the amount of wait times of five minutes or more, and put that over the measure of segment AC, which represents all possible wait times. So how do we find each of these measures? Well, the measure of segment BC, we're going from five minute wait time to a 15 minute wait time. So that would be a length of 10 right there. So we're going to put 10 in for the measure of segment BC. The measure of segment AC, we're going from zero to 15. So that is going to be 15 in our denominator. If we simplify that, we end up getting two thirds, meaning the probability that you have to wait five minutes or more is two over three or two to three or 0.6 repeating or 66.7% if you round that to the nearest 10. Now example two says, suppose a skydiver must land on a target of three concentric circles. If the diameter of the center circle is six yards and the circles are spaced one yard apart, what is the probability that the skydiver will land in the red circle? So in this question, we're trying to determine if the skydiver is going to land within our black circle here. If we know that, what is the probability that he also lands within the red circle? So how do we determine this? Well, it looks like a area probability ratio question where we take the area of the region that we 
want him to land in, or we're trying to find the probability of, which would be the area of our red circle. And we put that over the area of the total region. In this case, the area of our black circle. If we find those two areas, create that ratio, that will then tell us the probability that the skydiver will land in the red circle. Now, one quick thing I want you to note is that we're trying to determine the probability that he lands inside the red circle. So that'll be all of this region in here. We're not talking about the red ring. We're not talking about just this portion. We're talking about the entire region inside of this red circle. So to find the area of the red circle, we need to use the formula pi r squared because that's how you find the area of a circle. Now, the question is, what is the radius of our red circle? circle. Well, we see our green circle has a diameter of six yards, meaning its radius must be three yards. Well, how does that help us? Well, we see that the distance between the green circle and the red circle is one additional yard, meaning that the radius of the red circle would be the radius of the green circle plus this little one yard right here. So three yards plus one yard gives you a radius of four yards. That's going to be the radius for our red circle. So pi times four squared should give you the area of the red circle. The area of the black circle, we again use the formula pi r squared because that's how you find the area of a circle. Now, what is the radius of the black circle? Well, we're going to find that the same way. It's going to be three yards plus one yard plus one yard. So the radius of the black circle is going to be five yards, meaning the area of our black circle is going to be pi times five squared. So now I can figure out the area of each of these circles. It's going to be 16 pi over 25 pi. And now to simplify this ratio, all I have to do is just cancel out these pi's and I get that the probability that if some skydiver is going to land within this black circle that he also lands within the red circle is going to be 16 over 25 or 0.64 or 64 percent if we were to write our probability as a percent why wasn't the pirate in class because he was playing hooky Har you try Okay, this time it says you go to a carnival and play a game that involves throwing a dart at the board below. If you only get one throw and assuming your dart lands on the board, what is the probability your dart lands in the yellow ring? So this is going to be a little trickier than our previous example, because in this example, we're trying to find the probability that if your dart lands on this dartboard, that it lands within the yellow ring, not within the yellow circle like we were talking about before. So how do we find just the probability that it lands in the yellow ring? Well, to determine that probability, we have to again use the area probability ratio, which says we take the area of the region that we want it to land in, that would be the area of this yellow ring right here, and then put that over the area of the total region, which would be the area of this entire circle. So how do we find the area of the yellow ring? That's the question. Well, to find the area of the yellow ring, we're going to find the area of this yellow circle and then subtract out the area of the red circle in the center. So what is the area of the yellow circle? Well, the area of the entire yellow circle, including this red circle in here, we find by using pi r squared, where our radius would be two plus three, that would be five. So pi times five squared gives us the area of the entire yellow circle. Then we have to subtract out the area of the red circle which would be pi times two squared. So if I subtract those two areas, that should give me just the area of our yellow ring. I then have to put that over the area of the entire board, which again is a circle, and I find by using pi r squared. In this case, our radius is two plus three plus three plus three, which is 11. So pi times 11 squared will give you the area of the entire board. So now all I have to do is just simplify this. Let's square each of these and then subtract in our numerator, 25 pi minus four pi is just 21 pi. And now these pi's in the numerator and denominator cancel each other out, and we're left with 21 over 121, which means if you were throwing a dart at this dartboard and you were guaranteed to hit the board, the probability that it would land within the yellow ring would be 21 over 121 or 0.174 or approximately 17.4% if you round that to the nearest 10. Now, example three says, suppose you spin the spinner below. What is the probability the pointer lands on one of the purple sectors, assuming that all eight sectors are equal in area? So we again have a question involving the area probability ratio, where we have to find the area of the small region and put it over the area of the total region to give us the probability that we land in the smaller region. So in this case, our smaller region is this purple sector right here. So the probability that our spinner lands in this purple sector would be the area of this purple sector over the 
area of the entire circle. Now, the only issue is we're not given any measurements for this circle. We're not given the measure of a radius or the measure of a diameter. So what do we do? Well, something unique in circles is that instead of using the area of the given sectors, what you could do is just use the measure of the central angles associated with those sectors because we know that a circle has 360 degrees. So if we find the measure of the central angles associated with this purple sector that includes sector 8 and sector 1, we could just put that over 360 degrees, simplify that down, and that should give us the probability that our spinner lands in the purple sector. So how many degrees would be involved in this purple sector between sector 8 and sector 1? Well, if we know that all of these sectors, 1 through 8, are equal in area, then we know all of their measures of their central angles must be equal, meaning I take 360 degrees divided by 8, and I get the measure of each central angle here for each of these sectors would be 45 degrees, meaning the measure of the central angle associated with this purple sector right here between sector 8 and sector 1 would be 2 times 45, or 90 degrees. So I put 90 over 360 degrees, I simplify that down, and I get that the probability of spinning a spinner on this circle and it landing in the purple region right here, this purple sector, would be 1 over 4 or 0.25 or 25%. What's a pirate's favorite movie? The ones that are rated R. You try. Okay, this says find the probability that a point chosen at random lies in the black region. Assume that figures that seem to be regular and congruent are regular and congruent. So this time, we are given this square checkered board right here, and it's checkered with black squares and gray squares. And you think, how do we know that they're squares? Well, it says, assume that figures that seem to be regular are regular. And a regular quadrilateral is a square. We also know that all of these squares have the exact same area, meaning that they are congruent to each other. And we know that because it says, assume that figures that appear to be congruent are congruent. So if we know that all of these squares, black and gray, have the exact same area in this checkered board, it's going to make this question a lot easier to answer. So we're trying to find the probability that a point chosen at random lies in the black region. Well, because there's a black region and a gray region, all we have to do to figure out this probability is find the total combined area of the black region and put it over the total area of the entire checkered board. That's what the area probability ratio tells us to do. However, in this figure, we're not given any measurements of any of these squares in here. So we can't find the actual area of the black region. What are we going to do then? Well, since we know all of these squares are congruent within here, what we could do is just find the number of black squares and put it over the number of total squares. That should give us the probability that our point chosen at random is in the black region. So how many black squares are there? Well, if you count, there are actually 48 black squares. And this is a 10 by 10 grid, meaning that there are 100 total squares in here. So if we then simplify that ratio down of the number of black squares over the number of total squares, we end up getting 12 over 25, meaning that the probability that a point chosen at random lies in the black region of this black and gray checkered board would be 12 over 25, or 0.48, or 48%.